Hey there Dengas Chu here. Today's video is about adding a utility light bar to the green machine and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. I like to think of this video as a celebration of my unlimited genius because my plan was to add a tow bar, some new cleats, a grab rail, and a high stern light, and in the end I went, you know what, I can solve all this in one. Like many ill-conceived projects, this started with a trip to the scrapyard, and I'll show you what I found. Oh uh, yeah, check it out. So this I got for 50 bucks from the scrapyard, obviously it came off the back of a ute, as a uh, sort of tie-down bar or whatever, and I think it's going to be perfect for this. On the base here it's got a couple of flanges, it's got a few bolt holes, the whole thing's aluminium though, so I'm going to weld it on rather than bolting it on because I can't really get nuts to the other side unless I go right through the seat. So I'm going to weld it right around. What I am going to do though, is cut these bars off, change the angle this way, because one of these bolt holes here can go through the rollick on the gunnel. The nice thing about that, it'll actually brace the two sides of the boat together as well, so I think it'll cut out a bit of flex. The bar itself sits up higher than the outboard, and to be honest, this is actually where this project started. I've been planning to do a video on towing a boat with another boat for a long time. And on the weekend, we went out and gave a guy from the island called Kevin a hand because his boat had sunk. And while we were doing that, he reminded me of a lot of the finer points of towing. Namely, that it's very hard to maneuver a boat when you're towing another boat if you're towing from the transom. By having your tow point further forward in the boat, i.e. forward of the outboard or the rudder or whatever, the boat that you're towing with becomes much more manoeuvrable. So that's sort of where this idea started. I thought, oh, I'm going to put a post on this seat because I do end up doing quite a bit of towing around the river, more than I do fishing, for example. Then originally when I thought I have a post, I started thinking, hmm, well, these kinds of things you find at scrapyards all the time and they're kind of already made up for you. It actually would have saved me quite a bit of work to buy something like this than to buy a bit of tube put a cap on it, put a foot on it, etc. I'd also decided to put some cleats on. I'll show you what's going on there. So these are the types of cleats I've used in the past. I normally bolt them through. I normally put a bit of a bed of Sikaflex underneath the cleat. Then under here, I've just got some nylock nuts because normal nuts will definitely vibrate loose. So stainless bolts, stainless nylocks, a bit of Sikaflex. And look, it's pretty good. But as most of you know, this boat cops a pretty hard life. This sits during a storm, whacking against a pontoon, mostly because the green machine has very little freeboard, and they get smashed. Sometimes the plastic smashes on the cleat, sometimes the stainless bolts actually snap because they're relatively brittle being stainless. Then I end up with things like this, a big crack through here as well. Whole thing needed welding up. My plan there was to get some weld-on cleats rather than bolt-on cleats, so I don't have holes in the top, and weld it onto the deck, possibly over some of these cracks so this plate becomes a reinforcing member for this portion of the boat as well. And I think I will still do that. But being at a tie onto here is pretty good too, so I probably don't have the need. But having said that, I don't see any harm in having both. Also, once this is bent here a little bit out of the way, it's actually really comfortable to sit on the seat here and use this as a grab rail. Gunnels are dangerous because particularly people that aren't used to boat will grab onto a gunnel and if you're not careful and don't remind them or let them know, when you pull into a wharf they can get their fingers sort of trapped between the wharf and the gunnel here. So having something inboard that people can grab onto is much safer. Then on top of that, if I'm going to use this bar here to have a tow rope going back, I'm going to want some sort of pole or spike coming up to stop that rope going side to side. Then I thought, well, why not make that pole my stern light as well? Get it off the deck here, this is way too low. If a boat's coming from the other side, it's obscured by the outboard, so it's not even technically legal. So having it right up there would be ideal. And then that pole, if it's strong enough, could also be something that I could take a few turns around to keep that tow rope centered. So it's all starting to come together as a single install that's gonna solve a whole lot of problems. I've also got the potential then to get rid of this little fishing rod holder and maybe put some rocket launcher style things on the top there. Finally, Arn also pointed out that it's the ideal place to mount some air horns, so. That was the clincher. All right, so step one is I'm gonna get out of the boat and I'm going to cut these side arms off so I can weld them at a slightly different angle. My plan is to cut these off pretty crudely and then I'll just grind the rest of it off with a flat disc. Yeah. 
When cutting these off, I've tried to preserve as much of the notch so that it's easier to mate with the pole again here. And it also means I've got less grinding to do here. So now I'll get the other grinder with a flat disc and I'll just get all this off both sides. There's actually a fair bit to get off this. So I think I'm gonna start with a grinding disc and then finish up with a flat disc. All right, I've got them to about this stage with the grinding disc and now I'm gonna use the flat disc to neaten it up. Looks like I've actually gone a bit too deep in places, but never mind. It'll suit the green machine. All right, so this is what we've got now. They look all right. It's not too bad, but what I'm gonna do now is use the flap disc to do a final bit of shaping on this arm to make it the tightest fit I can around this upright. When I'm doing these, I simply put them together, figure out where it touches first, where there's a gap, where it's touching, grind away the point it's touching until the other points just start to meet. What I think I'll do now is bolt the two arms that I cut off into the Rolex and that'll give me a sense of how far they reach and where I'm then going to need to mount the crossbar so it all comes together. All right, I've measured the width of the bar and the width of the seat and I need to come 140 millimeters in on each side to make it centered and then I've just used a speed square to give myself a perpendicular line. So we know what line I have to go on. Now I've just got to figure out the four and a half distance based on the length of the arms. I'm just going to tighten the bolts that are going to hold these arms on a bit. I don't want them super tight because I'm actually going to have to get the angle right first up and down, but at least to hold them roughly in position. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this crossbar off, use the flap disc to clean the seat that I'm going to weld it to, and then I'm just going to temporarily screw them down to hold them in position and because the seat's then cleaned, I can sort of do a bit of welding around. I'll also grind the flange to the crossbar clean before I bolt it down so it's all good to weld. Because I've already drilled a couple of holes in the seat here to temporarily screw the crossbar down to the seat while I weld it, I can sand off all my old marks. I'll still get in the right position. Okay. The edges of the flanges I'm going to be welding are now nice and clean, slightly beveled. Then here, the part of the seat I'm going to be welding to is relatively clean. Now what I'm going to do is screw the crossbar down and we'll tack weld these arms onto the upright. Because I'm going to be putting stainless steel screws into aluminium, I'm going to put a bit of Duralac on the threads. Duralac is a jointing compound for when you have dissimilar metals to stop getting galvanic corrosion, that kind of thing. I'm planning to do a whole video on galvanic corrosion and electrolysis soon, promise. This arm needs to be held up a little bit before I weld it, so I'll just put a clamp underneath it to hold it up. I now need to pull the top of the bar forward a little bit, so I'm just going to use a ratchet strap to do that. I've got the strap just holding the top steady. Not a lot of tension because I don't want to be sort of flexing the seat here, but it's in position. Then I've just got the clamps here stopping these poles from dropping down. So they look pretty good. Reasonably happy that the angles, the boat stops down. I could actually put a spirit level on the gunnel here, then on here and just make sure they're kind of comparable. I might do that quickly just to make sure it's right before I start welding, but I think we're pretty much ready to get the uh, Get the gear out now and lock this in position. All right, wish me luck. I'm just doing a little bit each side so I don't get too much heat and distort anything. Although I have been turning the amps up because it's quite thick aluminium, it's taken quite a bit. Also because it's got that hard oxide layer, I'm going to do a video just on aluminium welding soon because the green machine's got a crack I need to fix. I'm no expert, but I'll definitely do a video on what I do know. What I really like about this bar is it gives the green machine a bit of a distinctive touch that stops it looking like every other boat. I'll leave this video here because what I need to do now is take the whole unit back off the boat so that I can get underneath and weld right around the arms, 
then I'll put it back and I'll weld those flanges to the seat. Another option for this project would have been to have the arms going backwards rather than forwards. It would have meant they aren't as much in the way perhaps and I could have welded the flanges right into the quarters where those two cleats are and yeah, maybe that would have been a good option too but we'll see how it goes. I can always change it over time. It kind of brings me back to that video I never filmed about requirements. The way I use my boat is very different to the way other people use their boats. This may be totally inappropriate for some people but I think it'll actually work for me. The main reason I wanted to do this bar is because I want to get out in the water and do a video on towing a boat. So this is probably the first time you'll see this bar in action when I do that video. Before then though, I may actually transfer at least my stern light to that. I did think about running some wires through the bar before I put it on. Those uh, feet, the flanges on the bottom are solid. They don't have a hole in the bottom. So I don't think it's going to be any easier to put the wires in later than it would be now. But I might think about running a couple of pairs of wires while I've got it off to weld it out. It's really good to do all your welding first, obviously, because otherwise you run the risk of melting the insulation for the wires and having them short. Well, thanks for bearing with me while I did this rather odd project. It was very spur of the moment. I just saw this bar at the Scrappy this morning. I thought, yeah, gotta have it. All right, well, take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya. Wow.